Welcome in to episode 16 of our Let's Play Humankind series featuring the Commons Quarter strategy. We are on turn 84. We are working our way through the medieval era. I've got goals for this episode to like try to get like all basically, I want to get like very, very close to the end of the medieval era. Like my goal is to be able to move up next episode. Uh, look, if you've been around, you know I play very slow and tend to just over-explain myself even when I don't want to. I just, I, I just, just my style is just how I do it. We will see how far we get today. We've got decisions to make about batets, getting in our batets before the end of the era. We're coming up on kind of getting pressured on tech time. We've got techs to worry about as far as like, getting to the end of the techs on that era and then burning science. We don't really want to be doing that. So, decisions to make, things to do, three peoples possibly to attack. We will see what we get up to in this episode. If you need to catch up on any of the action so far, in the description below, there is a link to episode one of this series. You can catch up on all the action throughout the first 15 episodes. And let's jump into the game here in episode 16. Here we are, of course, in our lovely capital city of Asur. Actually, population is growing pretty rapidly. We're at 31 uh, population. You'll notice that's substantially above our pop cap, we have problems essentially, but we're generating so much food that it's not currently mattering. This is not optimal though, right? I mean, look, being over pop cap, if you're still producing food, if you're still growing pretty rapidly is, is honestly totally fine in my opinion. It doesn't get you the fims that you probably want because you're not getting workers. You're basically just like burning through a lot of food on extra population, but more population does give you options with, with what to do with that population and it also does result in additional uh, FIMS and influence and things like that based on population. And since we actually have quite a few different uh, attributes and things, even uh, from the Neolithic era, right? Where popu per population, like numbers, like are good for us. So we are, we are gaining stuff out of this. It is gonna eventually slow our city growth down. So we are gonna eventually want to work on uh, that particular issue, right? Getting our food uh, under control, getting our population under control. So these are all things that we want to do. We also have to remember we picked our final tenant. So we have, I think we actually have four total holy sites we can put down because I don't think we put down the one from our last tenant yet. Um, and so I, and we got three more with the tenant we chose. Uh, donate generously, right? So we have four, I think, uh, obelisks of the gods to put down, which again, I don't think faith is currently an issue for us, but uh, something we could definitely look at as we're progressing through the game. Um, but... Lots of things to think about as we go. We have the free peoples, but we have four free people cities that we want to essentially wipe off the face of the planet. Like our goal is attack the units there, burn them down. Now we want to look at that because we currently have no militarist stars this era, right? So we may want to grab at least a couple of militarist stars this era in order to maximize some of our star generation. We are approaching a point where moving up is becoming very viable, right? We have all of our agrarian stars. We have all of our builder stars. Uh, we are only one territory away, just one claim away, which we're about to make anyway, like very quickly on the new world. Uh, we're one territory away from an expansionist star. Uh, we're, a, we're, a, we're probably pick up at least one more to seat star here. Uh, we have no diplomat stars. And I, I would assume that that is because our envoys are literally all over the place, not gathering the things they usually do. I don't know what has changed with them. I feel like in past games that I've played in Humankind, the envoys have been very good at going and finding the the grievances and leverages on the map and just collecting them. And usually I end up with a couple of diplomat stars in any given era. I realize I only have like four of them out right now of the like seven or something that I can have, but Still, you feel like I should be picking up maybe more than that. It, we're really close, so it does look like we'll pick up at least one Diplomat Star. Uh, we're not going to get a Gold Star, uh, a Merchant Star. Merchant Stars are very difficult to get unless you are hard-focusing Gold. Uh, the same could be true of the Sea Stars, but we're pretty we're focusing in influence pretty heavily. We're going to get this last Science Star as well, so we really don't have to have the Militarist Stars this time, but since it's something we want to do anyway, we might as well get to work on that, right? And, and we don't want to, like, wait and then end up going over on, you know, militarist stars, uh, you know, military wins in an era where we didn't actually need to do it. So we might as well split them up a little bit. So we'll probably be waging a little bit of war up there as we go. We're putting down a city. It's going to be our final city of this era. And then we'll wait and we'll put another city down, maybe another two. It depends on kind of what kind of pressure we get here in the new world. Uh, this will be our final city of this era. 
and then we'll wait until we research the next colony model upgrade to be able to put in uh, another city. Everything is going pretty smoothly. We're working on batets in most of our cities. We need to get batets down in order to move up because once we move up, we won't have access to them anymore. We want to want to at least get batets in all of the territories that we have right now. Uh, optimally, you'd love to like add one more territory claim to each of my cities. I don't think we're going to be at a point where we're probably going to be doing that. I guess it depends on influence. I mean, we've got a lot of influence. We're going to put another city in and then we'll see kind of where we're at from there. Uh, we also want to think about wonder claims for the next era and different things and saving influence for that type of stuff. So there's a lot of decisions to make as we go. But I, I think that we'll we'll probably progress in a pretty natural state through through the turns here, hopefully. So uh, let's do a quick check Perhaps on where we are with we treaties. One turn. Uh, and so in one turn, we'll be able to check all of our treaties and trades. So we'll just hit the end turn button. We'll rock and roll into our next era. Ah, Nox going from the Axumites to the Swahili. A powerful move. The Swahili, in my opinion, are one of the best in the medieval era. So Nox moving from uh, gold merchant to merchant. And that will be very good for them. Trade is being poached, apparently. I don't... Uh, there must be a war going on somewhere that we're not aware of. There's that Diplomat Star. That's not bad. Are you one? Here come or all of our proposals. I actually really like it that we have all of our proposals uh, and treaties up on, like, one turn. I post if it's, like, a turn behind or something. But it's just handy to not have to think about those. Except for once every five turns. Once every five turns, if everyone pops up, you could just do it one time. I actually really like that. Because otherwise, there's, like, constant, like, checking of this stuff, and it just gets kind of, I don't know, it gets a little rote. Like, you just, like, okay, I gotta open up that. We need to check who is it this turn, you know? I like that we're actually got it, like, kind of chunked together, basically. Uh, we'll sign this, absolutely. Are as just as you are wise. Oh, we actually have three Let's turns left so. on Nox. That's, okay, Tonight, so that was not true. I celebrate. So maybe, we're, maybe we don't need to, to do any of this. What other, what other people you are sending us things? An arms deal? Let us with speak. Gaiden? Uh, sure, absolutely. Your proposal makes Oh, and we have sense. a tr we have I treaty signed with Gaiden. Yes. I wonder what happened with Nox's treaty. How that ended up at three turns. Encounters Technically, like we could buy this coffee, but again, we're not making that much money per turn. We are trying to upgrade our units right now, so I'm gonna leave the coffee there. We're friendly. Um, what would we what would we want? I mean, we could like just I mean, honestly, we just want an alliance, right? So we would all benefit alliance. from growing closer, don't you think? We're allied we with enemies, we're at peace with enemies. We accept. There's too many, there's wars Look going on in the other continent. Look at what Empire has accomplished. A gasp of wonder, a cry of astonishment, and perhaps a pang of jealousy. I, I, narrator, I, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Mr. Narrator, look, the thing is, I have such a large lead in this game that I'm not really concerned about, should I wait to move? Nah, we'll find something, right? Surely we'll find something. Oh, also, we can upgrade this to a cog, uh, which we probably should do at some point in the near well, future. Well, well. Right? Another empire has certainly left a mark on the world with this cultural wonder. I Thank you. I'm sure they have. All right, let's upgrade this Gothic cavalry. All right. We have our... Th these, are, these are the units we want to run these attacks, right? I mean, again, they have swordsmen and chariots. We should be able to just... We should be able to just wipe them with this. Uh, so let's... Which which battle lines are better for us? That's that's okay. This is probably going to be better if we bring this guy here. That draws the battle lines kind of funky too. How do we get it? Yeah. This, this beats the battle lines that I want, I think. Yeah. Let's walk these guys in here. And let's walk the battle line in this direction. Because I think that gives us, like, full high ground control. Okay. Alright, we we're generating... We're gonna generate a lot of grievances here with these... With attacking these free peoples. Okay. We have two six stacks attacking... Wow, they have a gobload of armies. Holy smokes. We have these guys coming in as reinforcements. Um, they have, uh, we're attacking some spearmen with our cavalry, so that's the fun. Uh, and then they have coming in and reinforcements just an awful lot. Of, oh, they have knights. They have produced knights in this land. So they are actually upgrade, and they have some great swordsmen. So this fight actually now looks very questionable for me. So will this uh, I didn't do my research in advance. An Where's my other army? Barrier or a blessing? Their future may not be in their hands. 
Where did I bring my other... Didn't I have a... I have a whole army coming up from the south here? Oh, can I not see it because I'm in the battle right now? I might need these guys. <laughs> I might need these guys to come up here. They can't get there for another... I get up there in two turns if I go this way. <laughs> We may need to reinforce into this army yet another time. Uh, we might be able to take it pretty easily, but there's just a lot of units. We do have attacker's advantage. So hopefully we can pull it off. Uh, but we have to, we basically have to manual fight this, right? Now we would lose, what, a unit? A bunch of units, yeah. I, so we have to, I think we have to manual fight this. This is actually going to be a real tough fight. Cool. Well, we'll get to see some battle management. Uh, we'll see how I do. Let's see how I do. Manual fight this. I'll have to bring in my reinforcements, but I'll get to do that um, right away. From a deployment standpoint, this is probably going to be fine, because I doubt they're going to try to hold any of this. We want to kind of just hold high ground here. So let's just hang here. Uh, I kind of want to bring... I kind of want to bring my swordsman into a position like here, like in case they do put someone high ground on this spot here, we can attack with the swordsman if it's the pikeman. Because they, they, they do have the, the spearmen, right? Okay, so they backed off completely and are in fact like stacking inside of their city. We could delay some of their reinforcements as well by standing on these tiles, right? That would be the other... That would be our other option, right? Okay. We got more knights coming in. We want to bring knights around, probably. I don't like them being on water, but uh, we could have. I guess we could have taken high ground because we can't attack with these guys anyway. These are swordsmen. I think I want to bring. Let's get the swordsmen, the great swordsmen, in to the fight. We'll bring them in because they have to attack off river here. We have more horses. Let's bring, bring our horses around. Let's. We'll get them on high ground. I think they got. Are they? They're stack. They're stacking their own high ground over here. Which is probably a good idea for them. We have some Beira Hunters that we probably want to just stick right here. We have more, but I think... I guess we could just stack them. And then we have one... And then our Assyri uh, these These Assyrian Raiders are really just here for pillage purposes, so they're kind of a unit that is just gonna stay back and support. Although we probably should have taken that high ground spot right there. Okay. So now the question becomes, uh, how are we going to optimize position for our other units? Oh, we can't actually shoot anybody based on where I moved my guys. Well, that's unfortunate. Oh, that's right, because they only have three units in the fight right now. They're going to have their 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 heavy, their big reinforcements, I think, come from over here. I believe. So let's move. Let's get these guys in and around, maybe. Okay, we can't attack down into this. That's, oh, that is their great swordsman. So they have their great swordsman in. This is the unit we want to attack this. So let's do that. Make an initial attack there. Should be able to bring another, yeah, another unit around. That. And we can attack up the hill as well. I, I almost feel like we should. I think I'm going to. gonna hard commit our knights to this fight and try to get as many units involved as we can. This little high ground there, and then can we get all the way around? Oh, perfect. So we get all the way around. And now we'll have, like, effectively, we'll have some high ground on the back side of this, too. This, was a, this ended up being a really nice pincer maneuver. And uh, so we have their units. Th this was pretty, this was a passive move by me. I probably should have moved more aggressively because they're going to get to deploy all of these units now. Um, I probably should have moved in harder. Like this unit should have probably tried to get in. That's fine. I didn't get my Beira Hunters uh, to be able to shoot. They, I didn't get them in position to fire. So that was a big mistake on my part as well because now we're not going to get that advantage. We're going to have these guys attack down. So they have, uh, they do have horsemen, yeah. So they're gonna, horsemen are gonna come and make that attack. That makes sense. Ouch. Okay, so they, they like collapsed in on a couple of my units here. They're trying to get rid of this guy so they can free up these reinforcements. Okay. So now our Beira Hunters should be in position to make some moves. And the question is, like, do we want to sacrifice any units? We can get rid of Spearmen 
in one shot. So let's just start eliminating units. I'd like to get rid of their archers if we can. I bet we can one-shot their archers, too. Not quite. Oh, it's because we had high ground back there. We gave up our high ground position. But these guys are going to die. These guys should die in one attack, I think, right? Oh, that's a cliff! Oh, that's a really unfortunate for us. If they stay inside these walls, I'm going to run out of units to be able to get inside their walls. We're going to have to, like, bait them out of the walls. So this guy we want to run away, right? And then we want to bring... Probably our most advanced unit into that spot. And then this guy needs to get involved somehow. I think we run... I think we do run him so that we can get on the backside here. If he goes here, he can come around side, hit them next time. And this unit also could get involved in the fight somehow. We have to basically put them in a vulnerable position. But I think I'm okay with that. Let's put let's put the let's move them in just as just to pressure. Okay, over here we had a knight that just took a beating. Um so this guy I want to get this guy out if we can, right? If we could salvage his life, that would be nice. Uh, so we could put him back here. Oh, that would take their flag. We could just take their flag too. Because they have no ability to get to their flag now. We could end this fight early, regroup and come back in. So let's go let's go right here. Let's go right here. Or even here. Just off a little bit. We won't take the flag, but we'll have a unit there if we need to, right? If we have to jump in and take that flag, we'll have the ability to do so. So now we're basically going to take one of our horses and put them into a horrible position because we're just going to run at these archers. And then this horse is probably going to die as a result of this move. But I think I'm going to do it anyway. We just cut through. We get rid of the archers. Actually, we, we are on high ground there, so that's not the worst thing in the world, right? I want this guy to run this attack because I think it gets us the best like the charge bonus, right? Because if we do, if this guy runs the attack, we don't get the charge bonus. And it's actually a pretty pretty poor fight in that regard. So we'll run this. Then I think we sneak this unit through for the attack. We get, again, the charge bonus with the high ground makes that very potent. This guy is almost just got to sit here. We need to keep this guy at good health, actually. I almost want to back this guy off to here. Because no one else is going to be able to jump in and do anything in that spot. So let's give this guy high ground. And then this unit could come through. We can do a direct attack on these knights with high ground advantage, which I think is definitely valuable. We could also do this. Oh, we could wipe out the swordsmen. But I want to wipe them out from the top side, right? Like if I come up here and attack down, isn't that better? Oh, but maybe I can't because I'd be on river. Yeah, so let's just we'll just run it straight. I think the move onto river would have burned my movement, and I wouldn't have been able to attack down. But let's see what they do. Okay, they're committing to the the bottom fight pretty heavily. Or well, they're trying to get rid of units. What a mean what a mean maneuver to get to get their archers in position to shoot by by one like heavily damaged guy. All right, so we'll back this guy all the way out. And then let's get our we'll get our Beira hunters activated here. Could we take out? Yeah, again, we gotta we're gonna have to back off of the walls at some point because I can't do anything. But I, all I could do is like sit here and shoot. And at some point, these knights are gonna come out. You know what? The archers almost aren't worth shooting at right now. I feel like we should shoot the knights because the knights are gonna threaten our Beira hunters. Like they could come out right. Let's, let's double attack this knight. That way he's, like, heavily damaged. So if he comes out to attack our Beira hunters, he just sits there. Now, this guy's just gonna hang. Because he's he's hopefully attracting attention. And this guy's gonna come around. We're gonna try to get this guy around the backside. Maybe draw out these spearmen if we can. Okay. Now, things are looking a little questionable over here. We've got another swordsman unit that's come in over here. So we'd like to be able to... Let's see. One of our lower level units can run, yeah, like this looks good. So let's just do that. Oh, there's another swordsman there. Okay. We're putting a lot of our knights in potential jeopardy. Now, the nice thing is, is that their spearmen have sat there. Now, the spearmen are low level, but they're still anti-cav. So that's still, like, not optimal for us, right? 
I think this unit can come through here. Oh, can I? Maybe I can't. I think I just take this spot. Maybe when they don't attack. We might attack. I haven't decided yet. So we could flank with both of those. This we could run pretty successfully, I think. We get the charge bonus. I think we take this charge bonus here. And then the question becomes, do we then also take this? I think we do. I think we take this fight as well. Get these guys off the map. Okay. Uh, do we run this attack? I feel like that's a... It's like an even-on-even even fight, but we at least damage them and keep them from getting a charge bonus on... Uh, as good a charge bonus on our other units, because th these guys are vulnerable to this unit, right? So I think we run this attack just to try to keep this guy moderately distracted. This guy we're holding on to in case we need to, although these archers, I think, can shoot him, and they might, which would be okay. I'm not actually opposed to that. This guy's still just sitting here. Okay, let's see what happens. Archers are moving out. They do come down, so that attack ended up being good. They still don't move their spearmen. Interesting. And we can reinforce into this with our other army on the next turn as well. So we should be able to pull this off. The question will be is can we keep all of our units alive? Uh, that will be that will be the interesting part. Okay, cool. Fun battle. Very fun battle. There's the military star. That's why we're doing all this, right? Uh, man, they had a huge army. They had a huge army. All right, this Benlock is in. That's a beautiful curiosity. And then this army. A new independent people. And who are they? Time will tell if they are helpful, helpless, or history. Yeah, I think we're just coming all the way around. We'll just come all the way around to like here or something like that. Let's just send them on a, send them on a trip. Here's our boat that is up in the north. Uh, but we're just kind of cruising around looking for curiosities at this point. We got open borders so we can do that. Lovely. Impressive. A cultural wonder. All right, let's go. I'm, I don't know. I don't know what we're doing with these envoys. I, I hate that I'm having to move these envoys around. Very frustrating. Get them going in the right directions. That guy is making his move. I mean, if we just sit there, we get more leverage, right? Like, we could just sit there. Thing is, I swear there's got to be... There has to be stuff around here. Maybe there's not. Just getting forgiven everywhere. But if I put him on auto explore, I guarantee you if I put him on auto explore, he will beeline it back for the coast. Let's check. No, he didn't actually... He didn't leave. Interesting enough. I don't think he had any movement left, to be honest. Okay, this guy put this claim in, and we'll be looking to make an attachment relatively quickly. I think a valuable attachment would probably be this territory here, just because it sets a pretty hard border, although that's already a cheap one, so maybe... Maybe we go claim this next? To get our... To, to get the ability to claim a little bit better out here? Let's see what this territory looks like before we do anything. We don't We don't want to claim right now. We want to wait till it gets cheap. It extends this way? The heck? Okay, so it's got a little dip. Okay, but it touches touches quite a few territories because of that. Okay, so yeah. So let's move back towards the river. We'll put a claim in. Once this is a city, we'll put a claim in. One turn and we can turn that into our city. Habana is ready. Continue making batays. And we're literally just going to hard focus batays at this point, right? I don't mind this. We're going to put a research quarter here. A batay here would be fine. I don't mind that spot for a pate. It, again, there's no adjacency bonuses. The only other thing we'd put here would be a research quarter. But I think the idea of just putting a pate here is nice. Because we could end up running this through and connecting it to a couple of things in that direction with, like, merchant No quarters, doubt this independent people possess sophisticated customs, rights, language, and beliefs. I do hope you're going to treat them well. Yes, I do too. Okay, do we run through all of our? Always of honest intent. Run through crises have... real quick, just in case we have Come, any. Come, okay. relax. Sure. We're now supposed it to. It these... would be bad. I'm. Where we don't want to lose that diplomacy, and let's check our treaties real quick. We can make a treaty with Gaiden, and a customs unit actually would be good. I think a cultural exchange is better for us. Let's go that this first. This proposition should be in all our Refused. best interests. Used. Uh, let's go shared logistics. We would all benefit from growing closer, That's don't you think? Accepted. This is pleasing. 
And, oh, we have access to Burly has tea and gemstones. And you know what that means? Do you know what that means? I'm relatively certain that Burly having access to tea and gemstones means. Uh, Burly does not have tea and gemstones here. So this crossing point has now officially been utilized by Burly, and he has found tea on the New World. So Burly is now claiming land in the northern portion of the New World. He got beat pretty bad on his own continent, got, got cut off by Plosif and myself, and trapped into a couple of corners, but he had a nice little escape. The ability to move on to the New World from his capital, like, claim, which is huge. Uh, that's a really nice starting spot for Burly uh, to be able to escape out. And so Burly is claiming on the New World. So we're not alone on the New World. Uh, and I'm not going to trade for those resources quite yet. Uh, we probably should because tea is food, but we, we don't need food yet. Let's we'll hold on the food because we just don't need it. All right. Huns to Bulgarians. So someone does choose the Bulgarians, one of the other cultures we were thinking about for You've the common quarter strat. And the battle starts now. Ambush. Who's ambushing me? I don't appreciate that. Let's see what else we've got. Oh, things popping up like crazy. Demilitarized the zone. I'll have to figure out where that is. Ah! Plosif declares war on Burley again. So Burley, not out of it yet. Burley's army is all stationed now in an, in an effort probably to push onto the New World. And now Plosif says, nah, I don't think so. And now Plosif entering the water has units converging on Burley. And so Plosif says, I want more. And is looking to take down the Burly Gamer. Very interesting. I was ambushed, but then I won the fight, I guess. This explosive, that, that mechanic needs to be fixed. Like we're, we're allies and yet my unit got ambushed by him because of the ambush mechanics. Like it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Literally just does not make any sense. Okay, we're hoping that we can make it to, there we go. Hey, there is some incense and some horses and so, that's way up there, though. Well, not that far up there. If we could make another city claim here and just claim, like, coastal. Like, we just claim coast here to connect up to our empire. I'm not I'm not opposed to that. We could put a city up here. Claim around it. And we could put a city maybe down here. I, I don't want to go too crazy with claims. Uh, we have, obviously, access to the New a World Colossus more so than anybody rears else. its head, both figuratively and literally. Another empire has built the Colossus of Rhodes. Very nice. Thank you for the information. Okay. Honestly, there's so many aggressive peoples here. This is very difficult to <laughs> try to get this guy like across the map. Send him like this way. He's gonna run into the same. He's gonna run into the same problem. He's just gonna get attacked again, right? Okay. Let's wa watch. Watch and see if he goes back to the coast. No. Oh, look, look at that. He did his job. I think that's what's happening is there's they're, they're not seeing any leverages to claim. And so then they're beelining it for like the the bog tiles, right? They're just like, well, if I can't do that, then I guess I'm going to explore, right? I mean, that's what that's essentially, I think, what they're saying. All right, let's jump these guys into the fight. Why not? We'll get some other units in and then we'll. I don't know. It'll just be that'll be good, right? I'm relatively certain it will be good. Is this a horse unit? What is this? No, this is a swordsman. Let's have the swordsman come in and support this fight over here. This is also a swordsman. Send him here. I think we have a cavalry unit in this group, do we not? Vera Hunter. That we could just sit here and have him shoot. Another Vera Hunter. Which again, we can bring in. This, these, this guy's going to get owned by these Beira Hunters, I think. Because we have three, right? Maybe we don't have a... Do we not have a horse with this particular... There he is. That's what I thought. Okay, uh, but let's, let's shoot first. Casey lives. We'll have the... We have the last guy coming in. Perfect. And then this guy can come in with what should be a finishing blow. Ouch. No? What is this guy? Oh, he's just a horseman. We didn't upgrade him. <laughs> wow, he just threw himself against a knight and failed miserably. Oh, well. Uh, we just attack up the hill. That knight was potent. That was a, that was a hard to kill knight. 
Okay. It's a good thing we brought those units into the fight, because it's definitely getting messy up here. Can this guy get over here? No. He still has to jump onto a river tile again. This this guy has been useless this whole fight. We're still blocking these three units from coming into the fight, which I actually think we want them in the fight at some point. We could take it separately, which is not the worst idea. These spearmen are not coming out of this location, which is kind of frustrating. So we might just leave them there. Uh, we got a bunch of swordsmen now, so we, we can close on them with the swordsmen, right? Okay, let's get our let's get these Beira hunters into position to be able to take shots. This is gonna attract the attention of units. They might come after these guys if I put them here, but we're gonna do it anyway. Now we can shoot this guy, right? Got him. And then this guy. Can we get access to shooting the archer? No. Cannot shoot the archer. So we'll put him here. Just a, just a piddly little shot. This guy's just blocking this army. That's fine. This guy needs to get out uh, along with his other buddies. So we'll just send him send him far away. This guy is sitting on high ground, so I'm not opposed to that. And we get our new units in a little further this next time. I think that'll be fine. And then I guess we just do this. This puts this horse at great risk from a spearman attack. They have a little high ground. Oh, it should be fine, because we're just sitting here. Okay, let's see what happens on this next one. This unit could also get involved, but there's nothing for him to do right now. Okay, we have baited their spearmen into the fight. So their spearmen are now in the fight. Which is good, because that means we'll be able to eliminate them. The question is, do we let these units spawn in and also take those kills? Let's get, even though these are spearmen, we're going to take that. Uh, even the knights versus spearmen is actually a pretty decent fight. It's not it doesn't really threaten at all. All right, let's move. If we kill this unit, I think that's that's it for the battle, right? So do I take this guy and just run him away? Well, if they spawn in, I'm risking. You know what? No, I think we just end it. If they spawn in, I'm risking my my Beira hunters up at the top. There's another militarist star. Nice fight. We lost a unit. We did lose a cavalry in that fight. Oh, they went and took out the Assyrian Raiders. I didn't see that they'd done that. That must have been like first round. The first round, they must have taken out those Assyrian Raiders. So now Pompelo only has this three stack and then their, their army, right? So we can pull our guys back, get them healed, and we'll come in again a second time to wipe out Pompelo. We did lose a unit in that fight. Ah. <sighs> And we won't get our ransack bonus now either because of that. All right. That's fine. All right, this guy was coming back up here to put a claim in, but we're not going to put that claim in yet. And we're probably going to put the claim... Probably actually right where we're standing. But let's hold on that, because we want to make this into a city first. We'll do this. That spot's nice, but this... This would just look cool, but 18 food is too hard to pass up. But this would look really nice. I love the little nooks for these, even just for aesthetic purposes. All right, that's fine. We'll put it in over there. Okay, and then we evolve it into a city. 2760. We actually have plenty to do that with, so let's go ahead and do that. Mutinous? I don't know why that triggered. We have 39 surplus. <laughs> Bayaguana is our city and the first thing we will do is uh we'll put this this attachment or this can go down now so that we can eventually attach into it right 1412 uh, but that puts us on this is this is river right i believe this is a river tile yeah one one two three four we put it on the spot we also get one two three four but i like the the escape points here look well on the spot because it's a, tr a triple, like it's a tri-fork, it's a fork with, the, with three sides on I mean, you get one, two, and three spots to build districts off of without having to touch your river. That's actually really tempting to just go on the fork because of the, the uh, escapability of putting some districts in. Makes it a very valuable spot. So I think that's the play. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Rosalia de Castro. What a cool outpost name. All right, we won't be able to attach that for another two turns, but it'll be ready 
for the time when that happens. We'd like to get our batays in probably fast on these cities. Uh, once again, you'll notice uh, we do have some infrastructures that we can build because it, we don't. These were the ones that would have been built in if we would have waited for the next colony plan. But you can see how expensive they are. Uh, they're also not like hugely valuable in this city quite yet. So we'll hold on them for a little while. Uh, we want to get our batays in, but I think the first thing we want to do is probably get a farmer's quarter in and then and then batay kind of away from it. If we get a farmer's quarter in, we can pick a spot for our commons quarter and then we can batay like away from that, right? So if we put our commons quarter in on river over here, that doesn't give us a great escape point. I'd love to put it here. Although that could be a maker's. We could put a maker's quarter on that. Maybe that becomes a maker's quarter. Maker's quarter into a commons quarter here. So then our batay Bate would go someplace else. Man, the Bate is gonna have a, a we're gonna have a tough time finding a nice Bate spot. Maybe we put a Bate off of like the harbor. That's also an option, right? This is a big spot for that. That is that says zero turn build. That actually will is that auto populated? Literally staying like less than a turn. We have 61 surplus. We had that we had enough industry almost to build an entire quarter. So let's go ahead and build the makers up here then. On the opposite side. Because again, we want one of every quarter in our cities anyway. So we'll put the makers up there. And then that will... Again, we get both of those in in a turn. Then we put our commons quarter in up here. And we can batay maybe like down here in the corner. Or something like that. Okay. Cool. Ashore. Ready to build. Uh, we have batays to put in. So we don't think much about anything. We just go to put batays in. We have a lot of batays to put in the city. Uh, we need to build batays very much so. Okay, that is not our Bate spot, uh, because... Well, oh no, or is it? No, it, this is our Bate spot, because we are adjacent to our Tumulus here, and we're not going to get that bonus from... What does the... What is the Embassy text again? Does the Embassy only get bonuses from Fims exploiting districts? I think so. I mean, tactically, you'd want this to be a Fims district, but... We could also just put the pate here. We were trying to get adjacent to Tumuluses, right? I guess we could put it here and save that spot for some other, like, Fims based Yeah, I'm fine with that. We'll, say, we'll leave that spot open. Although, man, it generates 25 influence if it's there. 25 influence is, is substantially more than 16. So we're getting some sort of bonus from adjacency some, somehow, right? Ah, let's just build it there. What the heck? What the heck? Batays everywhere, please. Nineveh also needs to build batays. But we want to pay attention to what's going on again. Like, PopCap is becoming a major problem. Why? Because batays do not give us... Again, we've been over this a bunch of times, but batays don't give us any population cap. They don't increase our population limit, and so that's like high, it's basically highly problematic, right? Okay, uh, what are we looking at here? That's our common quarter, so we don't want it there. Uh, that is a nice spot for something, but this... I think we want that to be a market quarter, right? That's a really nice spot for anything that exploits river. So we don't love that. Up here is nice. Oh, a tumulus adjacent. Tumulus adjacency. Beauty. Uh, let's stick it, like, right out here. Perfect. Done. Adjacent to a tumulus. Man, we have a lot of batays to put in. We have a lot of batays to put in. Oh, except in, except in Gothiscansa, which is apparently just the most epic city of all time. Gothiscansa does not need any adjacency. This actually makes a lot of sense right here, I think. That's a nice river exploitation tile, but it's adjacent to... Well, we could go up here. Either of these are great, to be honest, for other tiles. Could go here, but to, go Tumulus adjacent. Just keep that, keep that as our MO. Yeah. Why not? Tumulus adjacency it is. Bahama also has batays to put in still, so we'll just keep on rocking and rolling with that idea. They got their, their research quarter in as well. That is a good spot, because that is not... Our common score is there, so this is actually a perfect spot for a batay. Yeah. Absolutely. Batay right there. All right, we got sciences to pick. We have one, two, three sciences left. One, two, three, four, five turns at the most, that probably goes down by a turn. So we got we got potential for issues because our batays are not going to be in. It doesn't look like. 
Uh, let's go guilds. I, we probably should have gone guilds earlier for the trade potential, but that's okay. Okay, uh, I think we can make a treaty yes, with- Yes, greetings. Yeah. I hope you don't mind if I stare. I, it's fine. We would That's all been refused every from time. Closer, Again, we don't, don't, we don't mind think. that. Do not Forget mind that. Okay, perfect. Uh, let's enter. 30 commons quarters. With this many entertainments, visitors will soon subscribe to the mantra, what happens in this city stays in this city. Oh, is that the idea? The commons quarters equal Las Vegas? <laughs> Um, excellent. We have 30 common quarters out. Now, technically speaking, we only have a handful of actual common quarters out, but uh, all of our counts as common quarters districts, we've got 30 of them so far. 30 by turn 87? That feels okay. Like, that feels pretty good. All right, let's jump these guys out. We can actually pay money to heal them. How expensive is that going to get? It's going to get pretty expensive. We're not in a rush. We got two. We got two stars already, right? Okay, these guys got to their spot. We're just going to start putting claims in, right? We should just start claiming up, claiming up land. I think we just go put the claim in over here. We'll just fill, we'll just backfill claims in this area. I think we're going to end up like right here or here. Oh man, this is a rich territory. We could end up anywhere in there. All right, these guys, I am going to, uh, no, we can bump over here. Not much to see because there's some elevation there, which is not bad. We'll pop these guys out as well. Unfortunately, this time you are merely a bystander to someone else's glory. I think we could try to cross here. We're gonna try. Oh gosh, no. why did we go backwards there? Oh, oh dear. All right, we need to upgrade this guy for sure. So I'm gonna spend the money to do that. That guy nearly died because I assumed he was a, a particular type of unit when he was not. These armies are getting. Oh my gosh, they have five crossbowmen. So we're gonna we're gonna one hundred percent want to run an attack on Yal Allegro. Now this is not surprising, right? We attacked Yal Allegro early and didn't finish the job. So they actually militaried up. They're not attacking outside of their territory, but they're definitely like out and about, you know, waiting for stuff. Most of us got uh, a quad uh, navies floating around as well. Well, these guys, we don't need to reinforce this fight probably anymore. But um, let's have them stand in Gothiskansda. We gotta keep an eye on what's going on over here. Okay, this guy also can start expanding outward now, right? This guy can pick up these claims. So let's start heading up with him. We'll keep him on river for a second, and then maybe hop him onto this river. See what kind of space we can get. Not much. Not a lot of view from up there. Interesting. Okay. This envoy, we're still trying to get back onto the land. Let's get, let's get him on land. I need you to do something useful, friend. All right, uh, by God, our brand new city has put in double districts and we're ready to put in their commons quarter here. And then after that, we're going to bate. Uh, we could just bate over here. I mean, that's not the worst idea. I thought about doing it here. It costs us five food, though. It doesn't really gain us much of anything. Even just bate like this corner right here, just so we have the ability to market quarter in. We can market market into our commons. Not a bad idea. We'll do that. In fact, we probably want the market quarter after that, so... Just like pack the market quarter right here that almost connects our entire city and then we put a research quarter in probably in here somewhere once we get an attachment but we could also just put a research quarter here just to get it connected and have one of each okay. cool habana also ready to build something we need to think about putting turns into angkor wat at some point but again uh, it's all batays for us for now that's a pate adjacent to a pate, and I think that's actually a nice play. I don't that I don't mind that at all. That's pate next to pate again because they don't have adjacencies. Uh, that doesn't doesn't take away a good spot for another district, and that works quite well for us, I think. Got the Skansda ready to build. They have built all their pates, so we have three thousand five hundred and ninety-eight influence. We're gaining a thousand and fifty-five per turn. So the question becomes, Gothiskansda has 59 above surplus. So if Gothiskansda is going to claim one of these two territories, we should add one of them now. Despite the fact that it would cost only a thousand, it only costs a turn worth of influence, we should probably do that. So the question is now, we, we did a little bit of city planning, I think, earlier, right? So Ashur is taking these three. I, they should be able to do that. They're at 59 surplus, but we haven't even put in, like, a public fountain. We haven't put in an apothecary. So, like, there there are ways we can continue to increase stability in Ashur. 
So I think Ashura is going to take all three of these. Our capital will take all three of these. I think Nineveh is going to take this one. Nineveh is obviously already in stability trouble, right? Uh, they've been in stability trouble basically since we started. Uh, but they're getting their potatoes in. As we get potatoes in, all of these problems will also tend to like alleviate themselves. I think that Nineveh is going to take this. That gives Nineveh one, two, three, four, five. But again, they're in kind of a little bit of a, a pickle. Now, Gothis Gansa needs to pick up some of these. So I'm questioning claiming any of these with Gothis Gansa. Uh, okay, so let's do it. Let's do a quick calculation. So Gothis Gansta has one, two, three, four already. Gothis Gansta has four. Four, but they have a lot of access. Like they're they're feeling pretty good. They've got all their batets in. That's pretty nice. So they have four. If we claim, if I want Bahama to claim this, Bahama only has what two, three, one, two, three. They're but they're like they're not settled. One, two, three, four. Five and six, like that's six for Bahama. That's that's a lot. But if they take all those, then that leaves Gotha Scansta to take these two, and then maybe one of these. Oh, what about yeah? Pompeo could be claimed by Bahama. Yeah, we, either way, right? So let's this one. I think we can attach the Gotha Scansta. I feel like we probably shouldn't, but Nineveh is just not going to have the capability of taking both of these. I don't think. I really don't think that that's going to happen. So I think we need to grab this one with Gothis Gans. So let's run that attachment. That gets us our expansion star that we needed anyway. Not that we were going to get that regardless. And that allows us to put in another Batay. Like that primarily, it allows us to put in another Batay. So if we just throw a Batay down. That's going to help with with all that anyway. So Gothis Gans is going to go out to there. I think Nineveh will take this one and this one if they can. And then... Bahama and, and Gotha Scansa will split the rest of these connections up here amongst themselves. Capital takes these. Habana is going to take all the islands if they can, and then we'll extend out from there. I, that's the that's the current plan. Might run into some stability issues, but it just feels like it, it's not going to happen with the commons quarters we have down. It just feels like that would be a surprise to have that problem. This this spot actually is probably, but th this is the commons quarter, right? So we don't want we don't want that to be adjacent. I think that's not the plan, right? That actually should be a, a market quarter problem. This pushes us right outside of a farmer's quarter. We actually don't burn anything by doing that. Now this is this is already being exploited. So actually, yeah, this is the spot, right? This is being exploited by this outpost. So we don't have to worry about exploitations on these river tiles. It's already being done. So we can put this guy right here. I, that's great. That will work well. Okay, there is our Batay there, and we press onward. Fields of research. Okay, so we're flying through Not science everything worth appreciating was forged by human hands. Ah. What is this? Is this on the New World? This is far side, far side of the New World. Uh, we are fully entreated with Nox, and so Nox has crossed onto the new world, I would suppose, from here. There is the Lensois. And some lovely silk. Oh, man, that's too bad that's on the opposite side for me. I'm not going to push a settle out that far. But that's some nice land. Look at how much territory there is in the new world. Oh, my goodness. The new world is enormous. We're definitely going to get to put a couple more cities in. I don't think we'll stretch that far, but I definitely want to stretch up the coast here a little bit. And then make like a solid claim in here. There, there's two or three more cities for us, I think, in that in that area. Let's remember to do this really quick. Uh, oh, wow, almost messed up. Oh no, no harbor spots for them. Huh, that's funny. Oh, should we plant it all though? We plant some forest. I mean, that gets us if we plant it on the river, right? Like that tile becomes amazing all of a sudden. It costs us food, but. I don't want to do, like, too much of that, but I feel like that's worth, probably. Right, so let's attach that in. That allows us to build another pate. Uh, we'll throw the pate in next. Uh, yeah, it's going to have to go on any of those tiles. Although, if we pushed in this direction with quarters, we could connect these two together. That'd be kind of cool, actually. But the pate can do that, right? Yeah, let's just put the pate right here. Okay, so a couple of pates going in over there. 
keep moving this guy. Right. Still just not seeing any curiosities. Easy. Alright, this guy is ready to make a claim, and I think we're ready to just do it, right? Oh, this spot actually is kind of ridiculous, because that's a one, two, three, four, five river spot with a potential escape into like a farmer's quarter right here that just exploits all of this food. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's probably the spot. That is probably the spot. That's just hugely valuable. <laughs> uh, that one's nice as well too, but uh, either of them will take the do the job, right? Let's just put that in. That's just, that's massive. The forest, I mean, uh, that's, that's abstained from intoxicants for you, right? Like doubling up on your forest plus your rivers, like it just makes river, forested river tiles with abstain and all the, the upgrades. Just incredible, right? There's, you just can't get better tiles than that, I don't think. All right, well, I don't think that's gonna happen. So let's head back down, I guess. We'll just, we'll just come down the coastline, maybe poke out every once in a while. I mean, we're not really getting much done here, but we should just be searching for curiosities, basically. Still having to control those guys, which is frustrating. We'll just sit for a little while on that. All right, this guy's looking to make potentially another claim. Although we kind of want to make like a city claim almost. We'd have to make just a, just a, like a naked city claim. Like it's going to be just out here. Oh, look at this. Look at this though. Oh, goodness. It's one of those moments that make you feel like a small thing on a wondrous planet. Beautiful. The Sal, the Salar de Uyuni. Lovely looking wonder. Beautiful in the game. Plus three food per farmers. And plus two money per farmers on city or outpost. Yikes. That is a food producing wonder like mad. Uh, so we'll claim that. So maybe that, maybe this does become the city claim. Put the city in. Oh, there's not a good river though. The land is kind of yeah. The land is kind of yik. Maybe we go one up and then make this our second claim. And claim along the coast here. Problem. That might be the play. Let's see if we can see a little bit more land. There's a river like in here somewhere, but it certainly doesn't look like that's the case, right? Ashura is still putting in potatoes. The potatoes are getting very spendy. They're getting very spendy now. Oh, we can potato. We can double potato next to the potato next to the tumulus. Don't mind if I do. Thank you. We might need to start one turning those. To be real honest, may need to start one turning those. <laughs> Now that I'm thinking about it, Ninawa is ready to put in more potatoes. And that? That spot there is nice. I mean, again, we could put a, a market quarter there, but I mean, how useful is that market quarter? Ah, let's just put it in. I, I'm not going to build that many market quarters this game anyway, so I should probably be less concerned about that. Habana on the New World uh, has their potatoes in. So now, again, the question becomes... Uh, Habana has an excess of 19, so we could still make another attachment and then put another... We could get another Batay in. And I think the goal is to get as many Batays as we can, right? It's got the... It's got value, right? Well, actually, the value in taking these is also pretty high. Let's go... I'm gonna go right here. Extend out to the islands. I don't get access to... Well, there's no, there's no adva advantage to attaching that. I think we attach... Let's attach this way. Let's go in this direction. We'll put a potato down somewhere where we don't need any like adjacency, like in this corner. Perfect. Great. More potatoes. How's Savannah doing? We're going down to 90. That's fine. We gotta we wanna keep our cities in settled state because we don't get that bonus influence from the potatoes unless they're settled. But we're we're kind of cruising along here. Bahamas ready to put in their potatoes on their new attachments. Where do we want to go with this? Right here is probably not the first spot. Okay. Another science. We are four turns, if that, away. Uh, it doesn't really matter which we take here, I don't think. Uh, so we'll just go furnace steel into military architecture. We have very few turns left to get things done. Can we get another turn in? I doubt we can get another turn in. I'm going to try it anyway. Let's push for it. Let's push for it. Nothing happens. We'll be doing that. One agent has been locked by another car. Version. We got people running around. We got. You, wait, who is this? 
They belong to Yalo Allegro. Oh, wait, did Yalo Allegro... Are they about to go into decline? No, they're nine turns from it, though. Man, they have a lot of units. These guys are pressing up into my territory now. Interesting. This guy's just doing a little exploration. I actually want to pop him up here. Let's see what's going on in this territory. There is a little bit of river here and here. If we were to want to make that claim. But I think the claim is going to be up here for, for this next city. This guy can keep moving. See, we're going to get an idea of where Burley might be on the New World. This claim is in. So we're just going to... This guy's just going to literally keep coming down and just put claims in, right? He's just going to claim up... We're just going to claim up everything over here. So let's get him moved to his next claim spot. Uh, which is going to be probably on over here somewhere. Oh, right here might be... Oh, that's really river heavy. Maybe we go like here. Let's put him here. We'll, we'll run the... We'll run the look. Uh, we'll run the look on the next episode here. We'll just keep this guy coming down this direction. Just keep an eye out for curiosities as we go. Is this guy in the middle of this continent yet? I kind of want to cross him. Let's get him all the way. Get him all the way over here. Then we'll try to free. Then we'll try the free explore again. These guys are just hanging out. That's fine. This guy is also. Again, if I let him loose from here, he's not going to do anything. For me. So let's just keep pushing him north. Oh, there's an aggressive free peoples there. That's my mistake. Now the Skansda has already built in that Batay. So they made their attachment. They built in the Batay. They still have 49 surplus. This is a beautiful city that's just doing amazing things. I'm going to have to make some choices here. We might have to make another add. I'm going to have to make another addition here. Do we put Angkor Wat in this city or do we put it in our capital? I'm really tempted now to put Angkor Wat in Gotha Skansda. They have 30, they have 34 people living there. Oh, sorry. They have 33, and they have growth potential higher than our capital. Let's combo it with our Victoria Falls. Because they have minus 10 population consumption. But we could just just blow food out of here. Although that that may it makes sense then not to put Angkor Wat here, because they already have Victoria Falls, right? We should build it in. I think we need to place that. Okay, I'm going to do that in the next episode. Let's, let's I'm going to, I have to think about that one. I'm going to think about that one a little bit. Also, I need to think about making an attachment here. They have 29 excess, so I think we make this attachment right away. This place is good to go, right? Boom, done. Now we build a pate. And we build the pate. Okay, got the scans that we need to make a decision on, so I'm not going to do that quite yet. What fight do we have? Burley is going to fight. We cannot retreat. Burley, why? Why would you do this to our poor, our poor dude? Can we hide here? Can we hide? Can assassinate my envoy? He's bringing, uh, he's bringing reinforcements in via boats to fight my envoy? What is this garbage? You can't see me. We're successfully hidden. Ah, oh, crap. They found him. Ah, he's dead. Alright, Burly. I see how it is. Okay, we're not doing that. Then we have a child savior. Ooh, what are we gonna do? 250. We can permit it for 250. This pushes us in the right direction. Done. Done. I'll take it. All right. That is going to do it for this episode. We're going to open the next episode by figuring out what the heck to do with Gotha Skansda. I think we need to place Angkor Wat. That's going to take a little bit of time. Uh, and I think we're we're come up on the end of uh, our, our time here for the episode. So with that, thank you all for tuning into the episode. I appreciate you watching. If you like the content, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. We continue this next week. Hit that subscribe button. Make sure you have notifications turned on. Move up week next week. Sure is looking like we're on the cusp of being able to do that. Come check it out next week. Thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate you. See you next week.